This is your USMNT Abroad weekly update from August 9th to August 15th of 2021. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Filippo and welcome to Tactical Marriage TV and welcome to a channel favorite series. Yes, the US Men's National Team Abroad series is back and let me explain real quick since there's many new viewers now. So the US Men's National Team Abroad series, every Monday we're gonna be updating you on a very short segment on how all the Yanks abroad perform on the previous week. Very simple, we're also gonna update you on any transfers and talk about the games I watched. With all that said, if you do enjoy this type of content, this type of video, hit that like button because look, 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 look. If we do hit 1,000 likes for the first episode, I will bring back Pedro Parker. I know, I know, some of you don't like him, but he might be back if we hit 1,000 likes. So hit that like button and you'll see Pedro Parker probably next week if we do so. So now sit down, relax, get some popcorn because there's a lot to talk about. But before we start, let's hear from our sponsor and their giveaway. Thank you, One Football, once again for sponsoring the channel. But look, 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 look. This one's not about us. This is about you because one football is doing a giveaway for our viewers so thank you very much one football but let me explain for the month of august we have an amazing event the mls all-star game versus the liga mx so, you know just another opportunity for the united states to crush mexico like we did all summer long we can just keep it rolling for another win so for this one football will be doing a giveaway of one mls all-star 2021 jersey for a fan based in the united states so go on the link down below do your download, follow the instructions, and enter the giveaway. I might enter it myself. So thank you once again, One Football, for the giveaway. Thank you for sponsoring the channel. And hopefully, the United States can continue to beat Mexico on the MLS versus Liga MX All-Star Game. All right, you heard it from One Football. Okay, before we go to performances, let's go through one quick transfer update. Matt Miazga is close to getting announced by Alaves at La Liga for a loan deal. Miazga currently belongs to Chelsea and Thomas Tuchel does not want him in the roster. So yeah, Miazga continues his tour in Europe. Hopefully he can find a home in Spain. We'll see. Now, let's go to the best part of the episode. Let's go to the performance updates. So let's start with Christian Pulisic from Chelsea. On Wednesday, Pulisic started off the bench for Chelsea at the UEFA Super Cup final against Villarreal. Pulisic came into the game a couple minutes prior to halftime due to an injury from Ziyech. He played the entire second half, extra time, and converted his penalty on a penalty shootout, which ended up with Chelsea winning and lifting the trophy. Pulisic's performance for this match wasn't that good. He looked very rusty. Now let's go to his performance on Saturday. On Saturday, Pulisic started and played 82 minutes for Chelsea at their 3-0 win against Crystal Palace for the EPL season opener. Palace is also one of Pulisic's favorite opponents for sure. Pulisic scored a goal, had a good performance, was pretty good on one-on-one -on -one situations in tight spaces, and he was also able to draw some dangerous fouls. He did play more central as Thomas Tuchel does go on a 4-3-2-1 formation with no wingers. That forced him to get the ball with his back to the defender at times, and Pulisic is still not very good when he has his back to the defender. When facing them on one-on-one -on -one situations, he's great. With his back doesn't look too good so that's one of the reasons some people thought he wasn't good i thought Pulisic did just fine and he scored a goal he did the job timo Werner didn't do his own job so Pulisic did fine next player is weston mckinney and he only played a friendly for juventus i'm not going to update on that the Serie A, the italian league starts next weekend so no updates on weston now giovanni reina from borussia dortmund on saturday reina started for dortmund scored a goal and played 87 minutes as a central midfielder on a 4-3-3 formation at their 5-2 victory over eintracht frankfurt he had a very good game he had a little mistake at Eintracht Frankfurt's first goal by losing the ball on Dortmund at the defensive end. But he had a great game in my opinion, scored, was very dangerous in transition. And look, he can play the 10, he can play the 8, and we have a lot of winger options. So there's absolutely no more excuses for Greg. Burhalter does have to at least try Reina Central if he's willing to bench one of his favorite players. Now Serginho Des from Barcelona. On Sunday, Des started for Barcelona and played 71 minutes at their 4-2 win over Real Sociedad. Des was subbed off by Emerson, where both of these players will battle for the starting job at the right back position, which for the time being, it's Serginho Des's position to lose. Also, when Des left the game, it was 3-0 for Barcelona. So technically, Serginho Des did hold a clean sheet while he was in the field. He played a role on that at least. That's, that's good news. Okay, now Tyler Adams from RB Leipzig again. I guess Jesse Marsh as well. 
On Sunday, Tyler Adams started and played 64 minutes for Leipzig at their 1-0 loss to Mainz at the Bundesliga season opener for RB Leipzig. Adams was poor throughout the 64 minutes that he was in the field. He looked lost a lot of the times, not knowing when to press, when to step back, also not good on the ball on his passing. He looked very rusty and a little, a little bit out of it. But to be fair, the entire team looked poor and that's a little bit on Jesse Marsh. It's just his first game. Hopefully he can figure it out. I still believe in Jesse Marsh, but not a good season open for Leipzig. On a side note, one positive is Tyler Adams played central, where last year with Nagelsmann, he would play as a right wing back all the time. So that was a positive, but overall the game wasn't good. Tyler Adams wasn't good, Jesse Marsh wasn't good. No one was good for Leipzig. Now let's go by positions and let's start with the goalkeepers. The first one is Zach Steffen over the weekend, Manchester City faced Tottenham and Zach Steffen was back at the bench and that's where he's going to stay all season long, only get minutes in cup games unless Ederson is suspended or injured. The second player I want to update on on the goalkeepers is Ethan Horvath. On Wednesday, Horvath started and played a full 90 minutes for Nottingham Forest at their 2-1 win over Bradford City for the EFL Cup. His overall performance was very good, even though he allowed a goal that he should have saved the ball because he had a very slow reaction. On Saturday, he was back at the bench and Nottingham Forest lost 2-1 to Burnmouth at the Championship. Now look, I did not watch the game, but apparently Samba, the goalkeeper that started, did not have a good performance. So that, I guess, is a good sign for Horvath. That means he'll get more opportunities. Moving a little forward in the field, now we're going to start talking about the center backs. And I'm going to start with John Brooks from Wolfsburg. On Saturday, Brooks started and played a full 90 minutes for Wolfsburg at their 1-0 win over Bochum at the Bundesliga. One of the best defenses in Bundesliga last season. They start off right where they left off. All right, so a clean sheet. Perfect. Great performance by Brooks. It seemed like he had a weird assist, but they didn't really count it as an assist. It was a weird play. Now let's go to Chris Richards from Bayern Munich for now. Richards stayed at the bench a full 90 minutes on Friday for Bayern at their 1-1 drop with Borussia, not Dortmund. Yeah, I can't say the name and I just, I just gave up at this point. He has to play and I love the fact that he's at Bayern, but look, if he's not going to play, I'd rather him get alone. All right, so let's move on to the next center back. So now it's Mark McKenzie from Genk. On Saturday, Mark McKenzie started off the bench for Genk at their 4-0 win over Leuven. McKenzie came in the 80th minute when the game was already 3-0 and it finished up 4-0. Now, I was going to update you guys on Cameron Carter-Vickers as well, but he is at Tottenham currently, but they're not going to keep him. So he's also figuring out his transfer. There's no updates on the transfer. So he's in a similar situation to Miazga, I guess. But Miazga already has the transfer almost settled. Cameron Carter-Vickers, we don't know, but expect some news on next Monday's episode. Okay, now the fullbacks. And remember, we need to hit 1,000 likes in this video if you want Pedro Parker back. And if you guys don't know who he is, hit the like button so you can meet Pedro Parker. And the fullbacks, let's start with Anthony Robinson and Tim Ream. And I know, Tim Ream's a center back, but since I'm doing two fallen players, I'm going to talk about them together. And yes, I will update you guys on a weekly basis on Tim Ream's performance. On Saturday, Tim Ream and Robinson started for Fulham and played a full 90 minutes at their 5-1 victory over Huddersfield. And yes, as I said, I will be covering Tim Ream. And you know what? They had an okay performance. And Tim Ream, Diego Linus says hi. Did I just... I, I think I just bantered for L3. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I just did. Now Shaq Moore from Tenerife. On Sunday, Shaq Moore started off the bench for Tenerife at their match against Furnur Brada for La Liga 2. He stayed at the bench for the full 90 minutes. But look, Shaq Moore had the Gold Cup, so he just arrived recently with the team. He is a lock-in starter for Tenerife, so expect him to start next weekend already at their next match. All right, now Sam Vines, that now he's no longer in MLS. He's in Antwerp in the Belgium League. On Friday, Sam Vine stayed at the bench a full 90 minutes for Antwerp at their 1-1 draw with Charles Leloy at the Belgium League. Same situation as Shaq Moore. He just arrived, okay, from, from his summer and from Gold Cup. Sam Vines is expected to start eventually for Antwerp, I would hope. Okay, quick update on Leonard Maloney, a player that many got excited throughout preseason on Borussia Dortmund because he's a center back and everyone hit lefty center back that we thought that he would stay with Dortmund. And yes, he did stay in Dortmund after preseason, but he's currently with the U23 squad. So he's now with the, the senior squad. Just an update on him. I will keep you guys posted throughout the season, but don't expect him to play for Dortmund this season at all. All right, now off to Joe Scali. On Monday, Joe Scali started and played a full 90 minutes for Borussia, not Dortmund, for the DFB Poco, the German Cup. And well, they ended up with a 1 0 victory over FCK. Scali had a solid performance and got a yellow card throughout the game. Now, on Friday, it was much more impressive than Monday, even though Monday he was already fine. He played as a left back on Friday against 
Bayern. On Friday, Scali started and played a full 90 minutes again for Borussia not Dortmund at their 1-1 drop with Bayern Munich. Very good performance by Scali on the defensive end. He got beat on a few one-on-one -on -one situations, but it was against Sané or Komen. And he also played out of his position as a left back. Very good week for Scali, but we do need to know if he can do this in a consistent basis. And also, I don't expect him to continue to start. Ben Sebane and Nötze are likely the options for the left back. And I mean, they're not going to bench Stefan Leiner. So Scali will likely be the backup of the right back position. So what I'm essentially saying here is he probably won't play as a left back very much this season. He'll play as a right back and he'll be the backup. So expect him to get minutes on the cup or whenever Leiner can't play, Scali might start. But regardless, very, very good week for Scali. And I'm very optimistic. Showed a lot of improvement on his technical ability, positioning and defense as well. Okay, now DeAndre Yedlin from Galatasaray. On Thursday, Yedlin stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes for Galatasaray at their 4-2 win over St. Johnston for the Europa League qualifiers. Galatasaray failed to qualify to the Champions League through the qualifying round after losing to PSV. That's why they went through the Europa League one. Now, Yedlin has been shaky early in the season and, well, there were rumors that he could leave or just stay benched. We'll keep an eye, we'll keep you updated on Yedlin but it's not looking good for him right now in Turkey. Even though last season he did just fine. Now, quick update on two fullbacks before I move to the midfield. Reggie Cannon and Brian Reynolds did not play for their clubs this week because Roma didn't play. The Serie A starts this weekend, as I said about Weston McKinney. And Reggie Cannon didn't play for Boa Vista last Monday. He's just returning to the squad. Expect him to play very soon. So yeah, we'll have more updates on Cannon and Brian Reynolds next Monday. All right. Off to the midfielders, and let me start by updating that Yunus Musa is still injured. We don't know when he'll be back in action for Valencia. I'll keep you guys posted next week. Now let's talk about Chris Durkin from STVV. On Saturday, Durkin started and played a full 90 minutes for STVV at the Belgium League during their 2-1 loss to Yupin. Now the Venetia boys, Tanner Tessman and John Luca Busio. On Sunday, Tessman started off at the bench for Venetia at their Italian Cup match against Frosinone. Busio was not with the team and neither was American striker Novakovic that plays for Frosinone. Tessman came into the game at the 82nd minute where the match would end up finishing 0-0 and going to extra time. In extra time, it got a little more exciting. There were two goals in extra time that ended 1-1. The game went to penalty shootouts. Venetia advanced, but unfortunately, Tanner Tessman missed his penalty kick. I believe he took the third penalty. With that said, Venetia advanced, so who cares? Richie Ledesma is almost back from his ACL injury that he had last season. Owen Atasawi is still figuring out if he's going to stay with the Wolves or get a transfer. We haven't had an update on that. Christian Kappas is currently not playing because he did get COVID, so he's out for 14 days. And Taylor Booth is currently with Bayern 2, which I believe they play in the German third division so he's not with the Bayern senior squad so maybe Taylor Booth will go on alone like last season or he'll stay with Bayern too just like Justin Che stayed when he was at Bayern last season okay now Brendan Harrison from RB Salzburg on Saturday Brendan Harrison started and played 62 minutes for RB Salzburg at their 1-0 win over Admita now look Brendan Harrison has been playing more as a central attacking midfielder rather than a winger I think he's even better there but he had a very very poor performance but look He's been struggling. He struggled the previous game as well. New coach, new season. He'll bounce back and he'll have ups and downs throughout the season. It's his first full season abroad. So let's keep a track of Brendan. But no, he has to do better than he did this weekend. Now Julian Green from Firth in the Bundesliga. Okay, it's going to be a very long season for Firth. This team did not look good at all. And on Saturday, Julian Green started and played 70 minutes for Firth at their 5-1 loss to Stuttgart. He was subbed off when the game was already 4-0. He played as a central midfielder, but he was more advanced at the time and looked like an attacking midfielder. He did not have a bad game by any means, but the team just couldn't play. Stuttgart controlled the game and big props to American manager Materazzo for the strong start for Stuttgart, which is Green's former club. Firth just has to find a way to not get relegated. Now Luca De La Torre from Heracles. On Saturday, Luca De La Torre started and played 57 minutes for Heracles after 2-0 loss to PSV. He did not have a good performance and many said he was one of their worst players in that first match. Well, this is not good because De La Torre rejected a call in Gold Cup so he would be in good form and playing well for Heracles early in the season so Greg could call him in the September camp. With that said, there's good odds that we won't see him in World Cup qualifying, at least not in September if he's not in good form, right? The guy rejected Gold Cup. Just an update on that. 
Quick update also on the Brazilian-American Johnny Cardoso. He hasn't been getting many minutes for Internacional. He has been coming off the bench a few times and getting 10, 15 minutes per game from time to time. But over the weekend, Internacional played Fluminense for the Brasileirão and he didn't come off the bench. So if he does start to get minutes, we'll update you guys more on how Johnny Cardoso is doing. And he is still one of our top prospects, especially for the CDM position. This now, Dwayne Holmes. On Saturday, Holmes started and played 67 minutes for Huddersfield at their 5-1 loss to Fulham. Okay, we've reached the forwards, and if you made it this far in the video, you probably hit the like button by now. Didn't you? So let's start with Timothy Weah from Lead. On Saturday, Tim Weah started for Lead and played 64 minutes at their 4-0 loss to Nice. And well, this is just a game to forget for Lead and Weah. Not a good performance for the French champions, not a good performance by Timothy Weah. In two games, Lille has only one point in the French League. The current champions have not started the season very well. And with the arrival of Messi at PSG, the odds of them winning League One again is very low. Now let's go to a quick update on Matthew Hoppy. So there were reports this week that Hoppy had a two million pound offer from Everton, which my sources told me it's not true. Schalke wants six to eight million euros for the player and they will not accept less. My sources also told me that Matthew Hopley currently has offers from England and Russia and is negotiating with some German clubs as well. He's also currently dealing with a stomach bug, which is the reason he's not playing for Chalka as of now. So what I was told, it might be due to the transfer actually. All right, now flooding Balogun from Arsenal, the dual national. Well, Arsenal started the season by being Arsenal. On Friday, Arsenal opened the EPL with a 2-0 loss to newly promoted Brentford. Lacazette and Aboumeyang were not available, so Balogun started and played 59 minutes, and he did not look very good. But then again, the entire Arsenal team did not look good. I do expect him to do better when he's in the field, but I don't expect him to play a lot, right? Arsenal has Lacazette and Aboumeyang for a position, and as long as they're healthy, he won't play much. Also, he didn't look good. He didn't move well off the ball. When he got the ball, his touch was a little off. But it's fine. First game of the season, he's young. Let's have a little bit more to judge Balogun off of. Plus, the nine position the U.S. men's national team is completely open. So let's give the guy a chance. Let's observe him more in the Premier League. Now another dual national that's English-American as well, Alex Maiten from Nottingham Forest that plays with Eton Horvath. On Wednesday, Alex Maiten started and played a full 90 minutes for Nottingham Forest at their 2-1 win over Brentford City at the EFL Cup, the same game Eton Horvath started. Now on Saturday, he came off the bench for Forest at the 68th minute at their 2-1 loss to Burnmouth for the championship. Now Josh Sargent from Norwich. On Saturday, Josh Sargent started off the bench for Norwich at their 3-0 loss to Liverpool. Sargent came into the game at the 77th minute and played as a right winger and he did not look bad in my personal opinion. He will play as a center forward at times and other times as wingers, as his coach has said. The next weekend, Norwich has another tough match as they will face Manchester City. So hopefully the yo-yo club, Norwich, can stay in the Premier League. It'll be tough and hopefully Sargent plays more as a center forward. Regardless, him moving from Bundesliga 2 to the Premier League was a good move to challenge himself. So I'm looking forward to seeing Sargent play throughout the Premier League this season and you should as well. Don't believe anyone that says that it's not an ideal situation. It is an ideal situation and our players have to fight for a position instead of going to a team where they're just guaranteed to play. You know, getting out of the comfort zone is ideal. Okay, now PFOC or Siabachu as we used to call him. On Tuesday, PFOC started for Young Boys at their 3-1 win over CFR for the USL qualifying round. He played 88 minutes and scored two goals. Good start the season for PFOC, aka Siabachu. Yes, but let's hold our horses on him a little bit. He looked okay when he was with the US men's national team, a little static and not overly technical at times, even though his holdup game was fine. He did score the game winning goal for Honduras, but he has a lot to improve. So let's hold our horses. Good start the season for him. Let's keep an eye, form matters. So maybe he'll be with our camp on September. All right, now this is a guy I just really wanted to talk about because the transfer he had this season was amazing. And it's Conrad De La Fuente. And when this guy plays, he just has that Brazilian swagger. Even though he's not Brazilian, he just has that flair. I just love to watch him play. And he's a guy that actually watched this game. And I'm going to watch it every weekend. On Sunday, Conrad De La Fuente started for Marcel and played pretty much a full 90 minutes as he was only subbed off at the 90th minute for Marcel at their 2-2 draw with Bordeaux. Conrad was dangerous the entire time he had the ball. He was very good on one-on-one -on -one situations, lots of flair, lots of technique. At the 70, 17th minute, he should have had a PK where he was able to go past three defenders in very tight spaces. In my opinion, 
That's a penalty kick. Amazing play by Conrad De La Fuente. For their first goal at the 2-2 draw, he had a hockey assist where he gets the ball in the midfield, blows by his defender, setting up Gerson to get to the Brazilian to get a low cross for the assist. Conrad was absolutely fantastic early in the season in the first two matches, making his case to be with the U.S. men's national team. I think Conrad De La Fuente being the men's national team is inevitable. Will it happen in September? I don't know. Maybe Greg won't call him right away. But if he continues this form, there's a 0% chance that we won't see Conrad throughout the World Cup qualifying. He has been absolutely fantastic, brings something different to the table. So I love what I'm seeing. But don't be surprised if he's not in September's camp. All right, now Haji Wright, which he's not in the same team as last season. He moved to the Turkish League. Right now plays for Antalya Sport at the Turkish League and on Sunday he started and played a full 90 minutes for them at the 1-1 draw with Gorstepe at the Turkish League. Last but not least, Emmanuel Sabi. On Sunday, Sabi started and played 76 minutes for Odense at their 1-1 draw with Silkeborg. Sabi played as a right wing for the entire 76 minutes. Alright guys. We're back with the U.S. Men's National Team Abroad, so every Monday we're going to have these episodes. I usually at the end read off a list of players that I normally update you on, but they haven't performed on anything, but I kind of did that throughout the video. The only player I didn't mention I'm going to mention right now is Eric Palmer Brown. He's currently with the Manchester City U23s looking for a transfer, but besides that, no updates on Palmer Brown for now. Don't forget to hit the like button. I'm very excited that we're back. I know this is a channel favorite this series. Thank you for watching. Try to hit a thousand likes so Pedro Parker shows up at the channel. Dustin doesn't like Pedro Parker, so do it to piss him off. Thank you for watching, guys.